This sermon is titled You will receive power be enriched as you listen Last couple of Sundays we've been talking about very practical things we talked about habits and routines we talked about purposes plans and pursuits you know how to develop a life plan how to pursue the purpose of God uh, in our lives and today I want to change things a little bit uh, very intentionally speak on something that is geared towards our spiritual lives to strengthening us spiritually I want to spend some time talking to us about the baptism in the holy spirit now the title of the sermon today uh, I've taken it from Acts chapter 1 verse 8 you will receive power so tell your neighbor you will receive power so Jesus said you will receive power so I want to spend some time talking about that now just to give us a little background this is a message we intentionally keep repeating over and over again because uh there are new people who come worship uh, who are part of the congregation so we have to continuously do this and uh you know we do holy spirit baptism we have that every alternate month so you'll have these announcements coming up saying stay back for holy spirit baptism now uh some people do and some people don't so because everybody doesn't stay back we bring it to the main service <laughs> so we're going to get to you one way or the other I'm just joking <laughs> uh so you know we want to talk about it openly i mean in the main service so that uh you know for those who cannot stay back if it gets late at least you know you get to hear it and now and then in the main service you know so we're going to spend some time talking about that then we're going to pray and uh, i trust that the lord will do wonderful things in our midst this morning as we get into a time of prayer Many years ago this was just before my 13th birthday uh, it was the month of October the Lord touched my life I got saved came to know Jesus Christ and the sub following year when I was 13 the Lord Jesus also baptized me with the Holy Spirit I began to speak with tongues and uh, it's been more than 40 years now and I've been praying in tongues since then Now there are days I don't pray maybe I was not well or something traveling uh so I can't say every day I did it but I can say almost every day so some days I did miss but last 40 years be praying in the spirit praying in tongues and it's been an amazing amazing life and so I understand and this is so important both that we see in scripture and also through life experience how important it is for us as believers to pray in the spirit to pray in tongues it's so important and so that's why we keep repeating this over and over again in order to encourage new people who keep coming into the church and who get saved and so on to help them experience the baptism in the holy spirit to receive power from above and so that's what this message is for and it's directed to those of you who are you know you've been baptized in the holy spirit you already pray in tongues and you already have heard of this and you know are journeying in this wonderful may this message just stir you up that much more encourage you that much more and help you journey in the things of god that much more so when john the baptist introduced the ministry of jesus this is matthew chapter 3 verses 11 and 12 when he introduced the ministry of jesus It's very interesting. This is the greatest Old Testament prophet. He's going to introduce Jesus. What do you think he mentioned in order to introduce? He's a forerunner of Jesus Christ, the son of God. He's coming to minister. What do you think John the Baptist pointed to when he introduced the ministry of Jesus? In Matthew chapter 3, verse 11 and 12, John the, John the Baptist said, "The one who comes after him after me is mightier than I. I'm not worthy to even take the lace off of his shoes." He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. Now what a what a way to introduce Jesus. The one that I'm introducing, this is it. He's going to baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. Now he could have introduced Jesus he said you know he has a long beard he comes like this he comes like that no no he pointed to this one thing this Jesus whom I am a forerunner of whom I'm going to introduce to you he is going to be the one who's going to baptize you with the holy spirit 
and fire. So Jesus is doing that. The word baptism is very interesting. It simply means to immerse, submerge. And so if you imagine yourself being submerged in water, water overwhelms you, completely surrounds you. You are enveloped by water. So think about that with the person of the Holy Spirit. He, the Lord Jesus, will baptize you, will immerse you, submerge you, overwhelm you, envelop you, cover you fully with the Holy Spirit. The presence, the person of God with the Holy Spirit. So that's how John the Baptist introduced the ministry of Jesus. And when Jesus began his earthly ministry, he began with those words. In Luke chapter 4, verses 17 and 18, Jesus said, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, for God has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted. So when he began his ministry, he said, Look, I'm doing this because the Holy Spirit is upon me. And in his earthly ministry... Jesus ministered. He did those powerful things by the power of the Holy Spirit. Not because of deity. Not, be, not by the power of deity. Meaning not by the power of omnipotence, omnipresence, omniscience. But by the anointing of the Holy Spirit upon his life. In, Luke 12, in Matthew 12, 28, Jesus said, I by the Spirit of God cast out devils. The kingdom of God is come to you. Right? So Peter also testifying to Jesus, he says in Acts 10, 38, God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power, and he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed of the devil. So Jesus ministered by the power of the Holy Spirit. And when he preached to his disciples, he taught them about the Holy Spirit. He said, look, when I'm going away, I'm going to go away, but I will not leave you orphans. I will come to you. I will come to you. And then he said, I will send the comforter, the paracletos, the one who's been sent to bring all of Jesus to us. And the comforter, who's the Holy Spirit, when he comes to you, he will be with you forever. He is with you. He will be in you. He will teach you. He will bring things to your remembrance, whatever I've spoken to you. He will guide you into all truth. He will show you things to come. So the Holy Spirit, He's going to come and He's going to do all these things for you. So Jesus taught His disciples, Holy Spirit is coming. He even said in John chapter 7, verses 37 to 39, Jesus said, He who believes in me, out of his being will flow rivers of living water. So this is what He said. Those who believe in me, out of their innermost being, will flow rivers of living water. Do you know Jesus wants rivers of living water to flow through you and me as believers? But what are these rivers? Verse 39, Acts 7, John 7, 39. The Bible says, But this he spoke about the Holy Spirit, which those who believe in him were going to receive. So this rivers that you and I are going to have flowing out of us is really the, the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit emanating out of our spirit to bless people around us. Are you with me? So he spoke about you and me. So those who believe in me, out of their innermost being will flow rivers of living water. So he said all that, but nothing happened. During his earthly ministry, nothing happened until his death his burial, his resurrection. After he was raised from the dead, he showed himself alive to his disciples. And in his very first visit, this is John chapter 20, verses 21 and 22. His very first visit to his disciples after his resurrection, the Bible says he came to them. They were all in the room. And he breathed on them. And he said, receive the Holy Spirit. That means till that time they had not at that time, John 20, verse 21, Jesus, <coughs> sorry, excuse me. Jesus said, receive the Holy Spirit. That was the moment they received. They were born again. But then he gave them another instruction. He said, but I want you to go wait in Jerusalem. Because there's more, more coming, more coming. So he said, receive the Holy Spirit. But he said, there's more of the Holy Spirit coming. So how can that be? Because God is infinite. 
See, sometimes people argue. Right? Wow. I'm born again. I receive. I'm born again of the Holy Spirit in me. What are you telling me? There's more of God? Yes, there's more of God because God is not finite. If God was finite, you can put him in a bottle and give it to you and here's all of God. But God is infinite. You receive him and there is still more. And you receive more and there is more. And you receive more and there is more because God is infinite. There's no end to him. Amen? So you say, I've experienced God. Yes, you've experienced God, but there's more of God that you haven't experienced. Amen? God's infinite. If he was finite, yes, then you would have received all of God. But he's not finite. He's infinite. So Jesus said, receive the Holy Spirit. Then he said, but I need you to go wait in Jerusalem because there's more of the Holy Spirit you're going to receive. Luke records it like this in Luke chapter 24, verses 48 and 49. Luke says, Jesus told his disciples, you are my witnesses, but tarry in the city of Jerusalem until you are endued with power, clothed with power from above. Until you're clothed with power. So wait in Jerusalem. And then towards the end of the 40 days, Acts chapter 1, verse 5. Acts chapter 1, verse 5. Just before he ascends to heaven, he says, I want you to wait. John baptized you with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit in a few days from now. Acts 1 5. So he's saying, You're going to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. What you're going to experience coming up is the baptism, the immersion in the, it's the overwhelming of the Holy Spirit on your life. It's going to come. Acts 1 verse 5. And what will happen as a result of that? Acts 1. Verse 8, you will receive power. So everybody say this with me. You will receive power. He said, you will receive power and you will be my witnesses to the outermost parts of the earth. So this baptism in the Holy Spirit is so necessary for you and me to receive this power from above so that we can be witnesses for Jesus Christ. Amen? Jesus saw it very necessary to tell his disciples, I want you to wait. You need this power. Before you go out, you are my witnesses. Before you go out, you need this. So wait in Jerusalem. So very obediently, they're waiting, the 120 of them. They're waiting in the upper room in Jerusalem. You know, so Jesus, he was resurrected on the Feast of the First Fruits. Fifty days after that is the Feast of Pentecost, or the Feast of Harvest, when all the harvest, you know, it, it, it ripens and it's ready. So on the day of Pentecost, it's a harvest festival. Jerusalem is full of people. They've come from all different parts of the world. They are there. And on the day of Pentecost, nine o'clock in the morning, these disciples are there. They're praying and they're waiting. Jesus, you told us to wait. So praying and waiting. And the Bible says, suddenly they came, the sound from heaven, the sound of a rushing mighty wind, and tongues of fire, visible tongues of fire, came and descended on all, all 120 of them. And they began to speak with other tongues as the Holy Spirit gave them utterance. Now, Jerusalem was very crowded. So people on the street heard, what's this noise happening? They come, and they hear these people speaking in tongues, and you know, the, the Bible says they're all confused. They don't know what's going on. So somebody comes and says, hey, I know what's happening. They're all drunk. They're all drunk. It's 9 o'clock in the morning. So Peter stands up, and he says, men and brethren, it's only 9 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> we are all drunk as you suppose. But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. So he Peter quotes from Joel chapter 2, verses 28 and 29. He says, this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. God said, in the last days, I will pour out my spirit on all people. God said, I will pour out my spirit on all people. And Peter says, hey, this is that. What you're seeing here is a fulfillment of what God had already spoken. This is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. God is pouring out His Spirit on everybody. He said, your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. On my men and on my, on, on my women, I will pour out my Spirit. Meaning no barriers, no boundaries. God is pouring out His Spirit. 
And then Peter went on to say something very important. Acts chapter 2, verse 38 and 39. He looks at this audience, you know, thousands of people, all kinds of people. And he gives them an open invitation. He says, brethren, if you repent, you believe in Jesus Christ, and you are baptized, you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. In other words, he's saying, look, there's an open invitation. There's a gift of forgiveness of sins. There's a gift of salvation. God is giving it to you. And if you will receive that, you'll also receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Meaning, this is not something you can earn. This is not a badge of spiritual maturity. This is a gift God is giving you. You just have to receive it. You will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. And then in verse 39, very important, pay attention. If your neighbors are asleep, saying, time to wake up. Acts 2.39, he says, for this promise, everybody say this promise. He says, for this promise is to you, it's to your children, it's to all who are far away sitting in Bengaluru, and it is to as many as our Lord, our God will call, those in 2023. Amen. So what happened in Acts chapter 2 on the day of Pentecost was not just for them. It's for us today sitting here. It's for us today 2,000 years later. As many as the Lord our God will call. Amen. That's why we need to keep preaching it again and again and again. So the church keeps sharing it and saying, hey, that promise that was given is for us today. Because the Lord is still calling people. He hasn't stopped. It's for as many as the Lord our God will call. And that's why we are announcing it to you and me today. That the Lord is calling people. Those of you watching online, you can get baptized in the Holy Spirit right where you are. So stay in touch. Don't turn the TV off. That used to be the old time preachers, you know. Uh, So, I should say don't turn your computer off or something. (laughs) Anyway, so... It's for us today. We need to keep reminding people, you know, you, you, it's for us. This promise is for us today. Now, the book of Acts records for us the first 40 years of the church. Now, it is certain, absolutely certain, that ever since Acts chapter 2, all the new believers were baptized in the Holy Spirit. But in the book of Acts, obviously the book of Acts doesn't record everything that ever happened. It records certain things in the first 40 years of the church. We have four more recorded instances of people being baptized in the Holy Spirit. First one, the fifth, first one is Acts chapter 2 on the day of Pentecost. But then there are four more. And if we examine each of these four, we observe a repeat of Acts chapter 2. Example. Let's go through it very quickly. Acts chapter 8. Philip goes from Jerusalem. He goes to Samaria. And he preaches Jesus to them. And the Bible says they received the gospel. Uh, There was great joy in that city. Acts chapter 8. And they believe in Jesus Christ. They are baptized in water. But then, the next thing that happens is, Peter and John come from Jerusalem to Samaria to pray for these new believers to receive the Holy Spirit. Now, I want to point something out here. These people were already saved. They already believed in Jesus. They were already baptized in water. But they still were prayed for to receive the Holy Spirit. So some people ask, Is the baptism of the Holy Spirit a distinct experience from salvation? Yes, it is. It is different. It's not the same as salvation. When you are saved, you do receive the Holy Spirit in you. You receive what we refer to as the spirit of sonship. The Holy Spirit comes in you, makes you a son and a daughter of God. But there is more. And that's why we have to pray for people to receive the baptism in the Holy Spirit. Just like what they did in Acts chapter 8. So Peter and John came from Jerusalem to pray for these new believers, for them to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. And they laid hands on them. They prayed for them. Now, something supernatural happened. It doesn't record exactly what happened. But there was a man called Simon who was formerly formerly a sorcerer, practicer of black magic. He saw, when he saw Peter and John lay hands on people and something supernatural happening, he offered money. Peter, 
How much do you want? Can I also have this power that when I lay hands on people, this will happen? He didn't know what this was, but he wanted the power. So Peter had to rebuke him. He said, you thought that the power of God could be purchased with money? No. It's obviously something supernatural is happening. The next, next recorded instance is Acts chapter 9. This is about Saul. Uh, as he was going into Damascus in order to apprehend all the believers, he encounters Jesus on the road to Damascus. That moment he's converted. His life is in the hands of the Lord. But his eyes are blinded and he's taken to Damascus. And he's there for three days. He's been a believer for three days. And the Lord Jesus sends a disciple named Ananias. He says, I want you to go pray for Saul. So Ananias comes to Saul. He calls him brother Saul, recognizing that he is a brother. And he says, the Lord Jesus who appeared to you, he has sent me, that you might receive your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Meaning, you need this, Saul. You need to be filled with the Holy Spirit. So we can again, once, once again, infer that it was normal practice in the early church to pray for believers to be filled or baptized with the Holy Spirit. It was normal. The third one, Acts chapter 10. Peter is in the house of Cornelius. Cornelius is a Roman centurion. He's part of the Roman government, and he's, a, uh, he's involved in the military, and, and he's got people gathered in his house, and, and uh, Peter comes to, to, to them in Acts chapter 10, and he's preaching about Jesus. Acts 10, 44. The Bible says, while Peter was still preaching, he hadn't finished his message. He hadn't come to the altar call. He hadn't got, the ushers were not ready with the decision cards. He hadn't even reached that part while he was still preaching. Obviously, as these people were hearing the message, they just believed in Jesus Christ. They said, we are going to believe in this Jesus whom Peter is preaching. They just believed in Jesus. And that moment, the father saw, hey, they're ready. I can't wait for Peter to finish his sermon. Too long. I'll just pour out my spirit. So while Peter was still preaching, the Holy Spirit came on them. And they began to speak with tongues and magnify God. And after that, they were baptized in water. So here again, some people may ask the question, do I have to be baptized in water in order to be baptized in the Holy Spirit? No, it can happen the other way. And how long should I wait to be baptized in the Holy Spirit? Whenever you're ready. These people, they believed in Jesus, and that moment they were ready to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Are you with me so far? They were baptized. They began to speak with other tongues. And then they were, um, they were baptized in water. The last recorded instance is in Acts 19. Acts 19, 1 through 6. Paul goes into Ephesus and he meets some disciples of John the Baptist. Meaning they had heard up to John the Baptist. They had been baptized by John in the river Jordan. And so Paul comes to them and he asks them this question. Have you received the Holy Spirit since you believed? And they said, we don't even know so much as if there's a Holy Spirit. What is this? And so he has to update them. He tells them about Jesus. They believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. And then Paul lays his hands on them and they receive the Holy Spirit. Acts 19 verse 6. He says, Paul laid his hands on them and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. They spoke with tongues and they even prophesied. So in all of these recorded instances for us, like I said, there are many, there would have been many other occasions when people were prayed. But in these five recorded instances in the book of Acts, we see that when people were baptized in the Holy Spirit, they also began to speak with other tongues. Something supernatural happened. So, this baptism of the Holy Spirit is for all of us as believers. The Lord Jesus is still baptizing people with the Holy Spirit. What happens? You and I receive power to be witnesses for Jesus Christ. And if ever the church needed power, it's now. If ever the church needed to rise up, if, if we need people who will be witnesses, it's now. The world out there is dark. The world out there is harsh. It's violent. It's aggressive. It's all kinds of things are happening in this, in this world. And if ever the church needed believers who are filled with the power of God, who are witnesses for Jesus in every highway, every violin, in, in the corporate world, in every area, it's now that we need believers who are empowered by the Holy Spirit, who will be unafraid and bold to be witnesses for Jesus Christ in the uttermost parts of the earth. It's now. Amen?
That's why it's so important for all of us to receive this power so we can be witnesses for Jesus Christ. I remember in my own life, you know, and it wasn't too long. I was only 12 years old, 12, 13. But in those days, I was so afraid to stand up in front of people and speak. That was not me. Right? You know, in school they had elocution contests. Everybody else was part of that, not me. I couldn't stand up in front of people. But after I got filled with the Holy Ghost, baptized in the Holy Spirit, everything changed. I asked my prince, you know, the, the chaplain, I want to stand in front of the school chapel and preach. So I preached and disturbed everybody. <laughs> the principal and everybody got upset. You know. I stood up in my classroom and I preached to the whole class. And that wasn't enough. I went to other, two other schools and preached. And then I wandered around the streets. I was on, you know, on, on MG Road, Brigade Road, giving out tracts and stopping people and preaching and praying for people all across, wherever I could find. Those days I had a cycle, so I could just stop anybody and preach to them. On the streets, done it all. Gone from house to house, putting tracks in people's homes and talking to people. Done it. Because the baptism of the Holy Spirit changed me, made me bold and unafraid to talk about Jesus, to pray for the sick, and to see God do things. Amen? So we need that. We need this power of the Holy Spirit in our lives. Amen? So, how do we receive? Very simple, you ask. The Lord Jesus is the baptizer in the Holy Spirit. The promise has been given to you. It's to as many as the Lord our God will call. It's for you today. The promise is for you. All you need to do is say, Lord, I receive. Jesus, please baptize me with the Holy Spirit. And He'll baptize you. He will pour out His Spirit on you. But just to help us, to walk us through that experience, to give us a preview, what would happen? You're not going to feel something. This is not a physical experience. It's a spiritual experience. So the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And like we see in the book of, in the book of Acts, when the Holy Spirit comes on us, He brings the power of God into our lives. He brings the power of God into your life. You're endued with power to be a witness. Now, when he comes, he brings with him what the Bible calls as the gifts of the Spirit. So those gifts are not ours, it's his, the gifts of the Spirit. So when he comes, he comes with all nine of those gifts. He doesn't come with just one of them. He comes with all nine. He comes. Because the gifts belong to him. He comes. And the gifts are like tools. The gifts are what the Bible calls manifestations of the Holy Spirit. Meaning, the Holy Spirit is going to reveal Himself, express Himself through these gifts, through you and me. So there are these nine gifts. Gifts of healings, working of miracles, uh, gift of faith, tongues, interpretation of tongues, discerning of spirits, prophecy, uh, words of knowledge, word of wisdom. Word of knowledge, word of wisdom. Nine gifts of the Spirit. That means through these gifts... The Holy Spirit is making Himself visible, and through these gifts, the power of the Holy Spirit is being expressed or revealed through the believer. So He brings these gifts. Now, what you and I have to learn is how to work with the Holy Spirit to express these gifts. That's the learning part. He's got it. He's brought the power. He's brought the gifts, and He's all ready to manifest Himself through you. What he wants is your availability. Yes, Lord, I'm ready. I'll join with you. And that requires a little bit of faith from us. Are you listening? Because we have to step out of our own understanding and co-labor with God in order to manifest the gifts, in order to see the gifts revealed through our lives. That requires a little bit of faith from our side, our availability and our faith. But He comes. He brings the power. He brings the gifts. He's ready. Now, like we saw, one of the first gifts that begin to operate is the speaking in other tongues. So why? Even I don't know why, but God chose it. He said, you guys need this. You need it. 
to speak with other tongues. So, you know, what is it? Well, it's basically God giving you a language which you haven't learned so that you can talk to Him. That's it. He's giving you a language which you haven't learned. Thank God you don't have to study Hindi. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Man, I struggled. <laughs> but this is a language He gives you. And you just have to speak it. It's a language to commune with God, talk to God. So why do I need that? Because if you and I pray in our own lang- our understanding, whatever language you know, our prayer life is so limited. You know, we make our prayer points, 10 of them, maybe 20. And then you're done. So what do I pray more? In our own language, our prayer life is so limited. But when we open up, to pray with the Holy Spirit. He's saying, look, I'll give you the language you just speak. You can pray for hours. You can pray the wisdom of God. You can pray beyond your own understanding. You don't need the prayer point list anymore. Are you understanding? So God has chosen this way of engaging with us. And, 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 and you know, praying in tongues is like the key to the ignition. So whether you're starting off a bike or a car, you put the key in the ignition and you start it and it gets all the other things, engines running. So when you start praying in tongues, you are positioning yourself. You're getting yourself ready to experience all of the other manifestations of the Holy Spirit. It's not the key to the ignition. But it's very important. So it's so easy. The Holy Spirit comes, He gives you this language, and you just start praying. You start talking to God. And the Bible tells us that when we pray in other tongues, our understanding is unfruitful, meaning we don't understand it. You say, well, what good is it? Well, it's good for your spirit. It's good for your spirit. There are many benefits the Bible gives us. There's a book out there, uh, Wonderful Benefits of Praying in Tongues. Take and read it. There are many benefits to your spirit. The Bible says it edifies your spirit. It's like you plugging your phone into the power socket to charge the phone. When you're praying in tongues, you're charging up your spirit. It, it reveals mysteries to your spirit. It is, a, it is a way for you to be rested and renewed in your spirit. It is a way for you to keep yourself in the love of God. It's a way for you to strengthen your spirit to overcome the flesh. Many blessings are praying in tongues to strengthen your spirit. So God says, look, I'm giving this to you. Use it as much as you want much as you want. Pray. The wonderful thing about praying in tongues is you can pray when you're driving. You can pray when you're walking. You can pray anytime. You can pray for hours. And in my own personal experience, there have been difficult times. There are times when I had to make decisions. So what will I do? I say, God, I need to make a decision about this. I'm going to pray in the Spirit. Give me your wisdom. So praying in tongues is going to position you to receive God's wisdom. God, I'm going through this difficulty. I need strength. Pray in the Spirit. God, I need to be rested and refreshed. Go pray in the Spirit. So you can spend hours, hours, hours praying in tongues. Amen? You can intercede for people in tongues. Because you may not know exactly what they're going through. They may be living in some other part of the world. You don't know their situation. You don't know their circumstance. That is okay. You just pray for them in tongues. The Holy Spirit knows everything about them. So it's a wonderful thing. And then there are all these other gifts, which we are not going to talk about today. But the Holy Spirit comes. He brings the power of God. He brings these gifts into your life. The first gift He starts operating through you is this praying in tongues. And then it positions you to flow in all the other gifts. Amen? And that's our desire. We want every person here, every believer, every child of God to be baptized in the Holy Spirit, to pray in tongues, and just be available to flow in all the other gifts to minister to people, to bless people's lives. And it's really simple. Just ask Him. You know, this past week, I uh, got the opportunity to talk to one of our young men, and he just was just sharing with me. And this happened over the last two, three years. Maybe between two, three years ago, he started coming here to church. He had gone through, he comes from a denominational background. He goes through, he's been through a difficult time. So spiritually, you know, things were not great. Uh, I don't know exactly how he came to a PC, but he came here. And I was helping with the sound. 
He's not here today, so don't look at them. <laughs> but he was helping with the sound. We were in a different hall at that time. And so that particular Sunday, we were praying for people to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. Now he was sitting at the, he was handling the sound that day. And he prayed a simple prayer. I don't know the exact words, but if I remember him correctly, his prayer was like this. Lord, if this is real, let it happen to me. That was his prayer, standing at the sound. And it happened. At the sound, he started soundboard, he started praying in tongues. Then he said, look, you know, I had to calm myself down because I had to manage the sound. So he did that. And then he went home and he just kept praying in tongues. Kept praying in tongues. And he testified. He, he was just opening up. He was sharing. He said, the last two years, two or so years, has been an amazing spiritual journey. From where he was, the difficult experience he came out of, and what God did over the last two some years. What am I saying? It's so simple. His prayer was simple. Lord, if this is real, We're talking about the sound. It's back. It's back. Thanks, Aaron. <laughs> so his prayer was very simple. Lord, if this is real, let it happen to me. And God took him up on the offer. He got baptized in the Holy Spirit. He started praying in tongues. And he says his journey the last two some years has been amazing. Amazing. He's not here today, so don't suspect them. <laughs> but it's very simple. Very simple. Ask the Lord Jesus to baptize you with the Holy Spirit. And I can testify personally, like I said, the last 40 some years of praying in tongues has been so, such a blessing. Such a blessing. And that blessing is for all of us today. Amen? So worship team, please come. What we're going to do, I want to give you some simple instructions. We're going to pray. First of all, of course, you have to be a believer in Jesus Christ. So in case you are here, those of you watching online, and if you're not a believer in Christ this moment, say, Jesus, I receive you into my life. I choose to follow you and you alone the rest of my life. So that's first prerequisite. You need to be a believer, a born-again believer, believer in Jesus Christ. And if you haven't done that, just pray. Receive Jesus into your life. But what we're going to do is in a few moments from now, I, we will all be standing. And we're going to pray for people to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. Now, you know, there are times we call people, line them up here, lay hands and pray for them. That's one way of doing it. There is no set formula. But you know, the Lord Jesus is there with you right where you are. We've prayed for people over the phone. They got baptized in the Holy Spirit over the phone. So it can happen. Those of you watching online, you will get baptized in the Holy Spirit right where you are. God is not limited by any of these things. All he's looking for is somebody to say, Lord, baptize me. He's looking for somebody to say, Lord, I want this. That's all. So, in a few moments from now, we will all be standing. I will lead us in a very simple prayer. Where you are going to pray and say, Lord Jesus, baptize me with the Holy Spirit. Simple prayer. And as you ask, you ask in faith, just believing. Lord, I believe that you will do it. And he will do it. The Holy Spirit will come on you. He'll bring the power of God over you into your life. He will come with all of his gifts. And the Holy Spirit will release a language for you to speak. He'll do it. It's one of the nine gifts. So he's going to release a language for you to commune with the Father. It's a language that you have not learned. So don't try to speak in Hindi, Kannada, Malayalam. No, no, no. Leave all the known languages aside. And listen. You'll feel something coming up of your spirit. Just open your mouth and speak. A language is just sounds. So right now I'm making sounds. That's all I'm doing, making noise. <laughs> but because... It is intelligible because you can understand it. It's communicating to you. Suppose I spoke in Chinese, which I cannot. 
it will just be sounds. <laughs> it, it will not communicate. It will not be intelligible to you. So a language is a sound. So you're going to make sounds to God. But it is a language given to you by the Holy Spirit. Which God understands because He understands all languages. So don't be afraid to make sounds. You say, I'm making sounds. Yeah, every time you speak, you're making sound. So you're going to make sounds. You're going to speak a language. God understands. Language comes from the Holy Spirit. It takes a little bit of faith to do this because the human mind has no control on this. But that's why it takes faith. So by faith, you start speaking. By faith, you give voice to these sounds, this language that comes out of your spirit. You don't have to copy me. I'm going to pray in tongues. You don't have to copy me. You don't have to repeat it. No. Just speak what the Holy Spirit gives you. Right where you are. Just speak it. But take the step of faith. It takes faith. And then just keep at it. Keep at it. You'll become proficient in that language. You'll be comfortable just giving voice to it. And then, you know, you pray in tongues here. Go home. It, make it a part of your prayer life. Pray as much as you can in tongues. As much as you can. I want to encourage you. There are some books available. There's a book called The Baptism of the Holy Spirit. So if you want to study this message further, you can pick it up. I hope these books are in print. I don't know. I'm just saying. But all of these are on our website. You can download it. There's another book, The Wonderful Benefits of Praying in Tongues. It outlines to you the benefits. So you can pick that up. There's another book on the gifts of the Holy Spirit. It shows you how each of these nine gifts flow and operate. So these the resources are available. They're all free. You can just pick them up from the book table or take them off the church website. And study it. But just imagine how wonderful it'll be if each one of us are witnesses for Jesus Christ. Amen. Expect God's power to flow through your life. Expect the gifts of the Holy Spirit to flow through your life. Let people be blessed. And the world needs such witnesses. Amen. So let's rise to our feet, please. Open up your heart. Those of you who are already baptized in the Holy Spirit, many of you already are. Many of you already pray in tongues. Many of you are already familiar with the gifts of the Holy Spirit. During this time, just pray right where you are. Just pray in the Holy Spirit. You know, be filled, 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 filled again. There is one baptism in the Holy Spirit, but many fillings. We can be repeatedly filled with the Holy Spirit. So let this morning be a time of another infilling of the Holy Spirit in your life. Just pray in the Spirit. Just, you know, just talk in tongues to God. Just between you and God. And God has always been faithful. God has always been faithful. He's faithful to His Word. So once again this morning, people all over this place will be baptized in the Holy Spirit by the Lord Jesus Christ. And so Father, we thank You that You are faithful to Your Word, God. That people all over this place and those watching online, wherever they are, Father, as they pray and as they ask You to baptize them by the Holy Spirit, Jesus, thank You that You are faithful, God. You're faithful to do it. You will baptize each one with the Holy Spirit and with power. You will do it, Lord. Let the power of God come on each person. Let the Holy Spirit cause the manifestations of His own self, the gifts through each one, Lord. Let it happen, God, even in this place. For those of you who want to be baptized in the Holy Spirit this morning, you've never experienced it before. Maybe you've prayed. Maybe sometimes you've prayed before, but you haven't started speaking in tongues, but you want to do that. Again, no compulsion. I'm going to lead you in a simple prayer. You can pray that prayer with me. Very simple. Just asking Jesus to baptize you. Those of you watching online, you can do this right where you are. And as soon as you finish that prayer, please, one instruction, don't say anything more in a known language. 
because we cannot speak two languages at the same time so stop whatever you're saying in your own language and by faith make the sounds give voice to whatever you feel coming out of your heart you don't have to copy anybody no 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 just what comes out of your spirit you give voice to it that's the step of faith that you need to take let's do this just pray this prayer with me if you want to receive what we heard about just now just say this with me lord jesus i am a believer i ask you lord to baptize me with the holy spirit pour out your spirit on me and this morning this moment by faith i receive the gift of the holy spirit i receive power to be a witness for jesus christ i receive all the gifts of the holy spirit Lord from this moment on let the gifts of the holy spirit manifest through my life to bless people and lord right now as a believer i speak with new tongues in jesus name i speak with the languages given to me by the holy spirit we're going to say this one more time and then i want you to switch over to the language the holy spirit gives you say this with me in jesus name i speak with the languages given to me by the holy spirit thank you lord thank you lord now don't say anything in your own language take a step of faith whatever you feel coming out of your spirit you give voice to it just speak it everyone here you pray in the language the holy spirit gives you i am going to pray in tongues but you don't have to copy me you don't have to follow me i'm just doing this as an example but you pray in whatever language god gives you just give voice to it thank you father thank you lord thank you jesus we worship you god we look to you god lord let every heart be open let rivers of living water flow out of every heart every spirit of god let heavenly languages come out of the hearts of your people that they may speak in other tongues as the holy spirit gives them the utterance lord let it happen all over this place those watching online wherever they are let them begin to speak with other tongues as the holy spirit gives them utterance thank you lord thank you thank you lord jesus thank you lord thank you jesus ede ama o bara sende de apa ma e de ara ma sendere ya pa mara so ko ba ma de go ahead everybody pray as the holy spirit gives you utterance e da ra ma sendere ke de istoro so ba ba ma nga ma ke da ra ra nga ra ma so ba ke de de ya so e de ya ma ra ka de de ya ba ba ma ko istoro so ba ba ma Elia mara sakeriri ko bara ma sendeli akoro If you want to sing in tongues you can in a few minutes from now I'll ask Joshua to sing for us in tongues and we're going to worship God singing in the spirit like Paul wrote He said you can speak with tongues you can sing with tongues so if you like singing just go ahead and sing in tongues let's pray in tongues for a little bit more and then we will shift to singing in tongues It's between you and God 
many of you here this morning for the first time for the first time you prayed said Lord baptize me the Holy Spirit and you brought you started praying in tongues for the very first time can I see your hand please anybody here for the first time in your life you started praying in tongues just raise your hand just raise your hand one who else one two how many just raise your hand wave your hand at me Three, four, five. Wonderful. Any more? Let's see your hands. Five. For the first time. First time. Well, I've counted at least five people. At least five. I know many of us already pray in tongues. You know, we do this throughout the year. But wonderful, wonderful. Now, you know, if you are new to all of this, and maybe I hope we didn't scare you. But I want you to know this is so real. This is so real. Maybe you heard this for the first time. You're saying, God, I'm not sure about this. It's okay. I was like that when I heard it the first time. But I did something. I went home. I saw it in the Bible. I said, God, this is for me. And at home, I started praying in tongues. So you can do the same thing. You know, maybe you heard this. You're not very sure. Go home. Look it up in the Bible. Or listen to this message again. Look up the scriptures. And then you pray. Say, Lord, I'm ready. And at home, right where you are, the Lord will do it. 
you will start praying in tongues. So, you know, don't be discouraged if you didn't start praying in tongues right here. He'll meet you at home, right where you are. He'll, he'll do it. But I want to encourage all of us. Make this an important part of your life. Pray in tongues. Pray in tongues. This is so important for us in our spiritual journey. To be strong, to keep growing, to keep moving forward. Just to encounter God. Amen? It's a God-given way for us to talk to Him. It's beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to take a few more minutes. And as we, I want you to just pray in the Spirit. And at the same time, we just invite Him to heal, to deliver people. Okay? The purpose of the power is to do work in us. If you're sick, to heal us. If you're bound with something, to deliver us. That's the purpose of the power. And so we've come this far. Let's go a little further. Say, so Lord, there are people who might, there might be people who need healing. Heal. There might be people who need deliverance, who need to be set free from things in their lives. Let them be delivered. You know, if maybe there are addictions in your life. Maybe you smoke. You can't give it up. Maybe you're into porn- pornography. You can't give it up. Maybe you're into other wrong relationships and things that you say, God, I don't know how to come out of this. Well, this is your moment. The same power that we spoke about is there to break bondages, to get us out of our mess, to get us out of our difficulties, to get us out of our problems. It's the power of the Holy Spirit. So everybody, just pray in tongues and I'll just pray a simple prayer. It's God who does the work. But if you need God to touch your life in some way, touch you physically, emotionally, just pray a simple prayer and say, Lord, Please touch me, help me, heal me, deliver me, set me free, change me, whatever. Just pray a simple prayer. Father, we thank you that your word says when we are gathered together, the Lord Jesus is with us and his power is here. And so in the name of the Lord Jesus and because of the power of Almighty God, let every sickness be healed. Sickness and disease, we take authority over you. Every evil work of the devil, we take authority over you. Every foul, unclean spirit, every spirit of sin, every spirit of addictive behavior, every spirit of bondage, every foul, evil, unclean spirit, we take authority over you. In the name of Jesus, we command you to leave. We command every spirit of infirmity to leave. We command every spirit of pain to leave. Every spirit causing sickness and disease, we command you to leave. Every spirit of oppression, oppressing the mind, tormenting the emotions, we command you to leave. And Lord, in this place, in the name of Jesus, by the power of the Holy Spirit, let people be healed, let people be delivered, let people be set free, and let people be made whole. In Jesus' name. We thank you, God. You're the miracle-working God. You're the healing God. You're the delivering God. Thank you, God, for touching your people. Thank you. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Thank you. Thank you. going to close. If you need prayer, or just invite our pastors, the life group leaders to be available here in the, in the front. If you need personal prayer, we'll be available. And if the Lord has done a wonderful thing in your life, a testimony, send us a testimony. The email is there, testimony at apcw.org. Just share the good thing the Lord has done and we will share that with the church anonymously. Or mention your name. We'd like to celebrate with you. Amen? Let's close. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, our Heavenly Father, and the sweet fellowship of His Holy Spirit be with each of us always. In Jesus' name. 
Thank you for listening. We trust this message was a blessing to you. For more free resources, including sermons, sermon notes and books, please visit apcwo.org. For information on APC Bible College in Bangalore, visit apcbiblecollege.org. Do remember to download the All People's Church Bangalore app from the Apple or Google Play Store.